A freshman from Orlando, Florida, number four, Adam Chani. Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Um, unfortunately, once again, with this quarantine, it's very complicated to get these training sessions in, especially with your teammates and friends. But let's make sure we're grinding, let's make sure we're working hard and um, to become a better player as much as we can. So welcome to a new episode of Going the Distance. And today we have Joe DeBenny. Um, he's a Division I uh, college soccer player over at UTRG in Texas. And we're going to go over his journey and how he became a Division One soccer player. And so I'll give it up to you. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and, you know, we'll get started from there. Hey, guys, my name is Joe Dobbini Dondelli, and I am a Division One soccer player at University of Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. And pretty much I'm currently 24 years old. And this next fall is going to be my last year of eligibility. So after this next semester, my goal is to at least try to make it into the MLS draft. Or if not, just find a team before that or around that same time period. Because not everybody that makes it to the, the draft stays on their pro teams. So I want to get on the team and stay and keep progressing forward. And pretty much I started soccer when I was 16 in 10th grade. I did track in ninth grade. I did track also my 10th grade year. I did football in middle school, tried off a basketball team, got cut. Never touched the basketball again. And uh, that was my background before mm -hmm. soccer. And like mm -hmm. freshman year in high school, the state tests were testing. Some kid was like, hey, you have your job in here. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, I heard you were fast. You should come try for soccer. I was like, I suck. And he was like, no, 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 it doesn't matter. Our team sucks. So you'll be fine. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll put in my little schedule thing for the next year. I went in and then you had to like try out to be in part of the class. And then people who are in the class later on down the year, they try out for the actual team. I made the class. Um, I did not know anything. Like everybody was laughing at me like the first week of tryouts for the class. And I'm pretty sure I was going to get cut. But then like the last day I took off my shirt and like, I'm, I'm like naturally really built and cut. So like everybody was looking at me. And then Monday came, my friends were like, bro, you made the soccer class? I was like, what are you talking about? And I went to go see and then they had my name. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And like after the first year of school, the, the coach, he told me, he said, I see potential in you. So I decided to put you in a class and see what would happen by the time, you know, tryouts came. So I made JV, tryouts came, I made the team. And then, you know, the, our, our JV team was garbage. Like, you know, we, they haven't won a single game in eight years. So here I am, they put me on, and then the very first game, I didn't play at all. And then the coach was just like, I want you to learn more before I'm gonna let you play on. Second game came, uh, I played, fortunately. This center mid wasn't playing his best, and then the coach was like, Judavini. I was like, yes, sir, and I ran up to him. He's like, do you know how to play defensive mid? I was like, what is that? And then he just gave me like this, this sigh. He's like, you see that guy over there? Just replace them and don't let anybody score. So I went in and anybody on the other team that had a ball, I just chased them down. Like I'd get the ball and give it to, kick it to whoever I knew. And then yeah. the game ended, we tied 0-0. Zero, zero, and everybody was like carrying me on their shoulder because that's the first tie in like two years. So I felt like, uh, and that was, after I felt that feeling, like I would always remember it. I was like, okay, I want to keep doing this. And then later on a quick track, you know, and then um, I went to my junior year. You know, prior to yeah, a lot of the kids on varsity were like, yeah, you made JV, but you're not good enough for varsity. So me hearing that a lot during that spring, se spring semester of my sophomore year, I worked hard. During the summer, I, I trained every day. And then junior year came, I ended up making varsity. I started every single game. And then senior year came, I was expecting the same and I tore my hamstring. So my senior year, I was just like, ow, ow. Like, I didn't do anything. I was sitting on bench. I played the very first game. I got a, my first goal, high school goal. Yeah, I got it. And then I got injured. 
So I didn't really do much my senior year. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a good. Uh, okay, that's a good way to start off the podcast. Uh, you know, a little bit of background of uh, how your high school experience was. But um, yeah, it seems like uh, so you started. So I guess let's let's go back a little bit. Uh, and also, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, Joe Davani. That's how you say it, right? Joe Davani. Joe Davani uh, also has a YouTube channel. You guys should all definitely check it out. Link in bio. Uh, he posts some soccer videos, day in the lives, all that good stuff. So his information is going to be down there. Um, moving on. So let's uh, let's start off from way before uh, high school. Did you ever did you play any other sports when you were younger? Uh, I know, like I did track. Like I always liked to run. I did track in seventh grade, and then by my favorite thing in track, I did pole vaulting. Um, I wish that, I had that some videos. You run and you yeah with the pole. Whoa, I, I did it my I did it my freshman year in high school too. Um, I was gonna break the school record by the end of my sophomore year. So whenever I quit, like my coaches were just like they didn't understand. And I, was, I just hated the feeling. I don't know if you ever did track, but whenever all the pressure is just on you alone, I didn't really like that because your te your teammates became your enemies, like it meets. And like some people would be like jealous if you're beating them. And I was beating a bunch of people like on my team. So the highest I ever jumped was 12-6 and our school's record was 13-2. So I was literally like, Maybe oh, this much. So, uh, the bar uh, barely moves. If I could just jump over that, I would have had my name. On this wow, record. that's that's really interesting. You know, to have some some uh, some success in different sports, and then all of a sudden change into a different sport, uh, mm -hmm. soccer, which is completely different. You know, you got the technical aspect, the tactical aspect. It's just so many different things. Um, so I would. So you said your your sophomore year was the first time playing soccer. Was is that yeah. correct? Wow, the very first time. How was that transition going um, in more detail from never playing soccer before to now all of a sudden at 16 years old playing soccer for the first time? Um, as I mentioned before, the JV team wasn't the best team. So it wasn't something that like whenever I was on, it was just like, oh my goodness, everybody's playing really fast. You know, a lot of them didn't care about soccer. A lot of them, you know, they all played a little bit growing up, but they, they did it for fun. And then when I got there, I was looking at online videos like, I don't know if you know, a YouTube channel is pretty old, Online Soccer Academy, believe in it. Uh, back when I was in high school, he was like the only YouTuber. Yeah, I, I don't think he makes videos anymore, but he was the only person I'd watch. And then later on, I started fighting like Become Elite. And then I was just watching so many YouTube tutorials of things. And like, cause I'd ask my team and stuff like, what do you do to work on this? They're like, I don't know. I just learned it playing soccer. So th that was very helpful. And um, yeah, just, so you know, the more I practice, the more I just, everything started catching on. Right, all right. So starting off on the JV team that wasn't as competitive probably helped you because I can yeah. imagine if it was really competitive, I don't think you, I probably, would. you probably would have gotten scared and, and not continue to play or maybe you not make the team. So I think that was a not bad, not bad of an introduction. Um, so, uh, you say you went, you, you spoke about uh, going through your sophomore, junior, and then your senior year. How was that experience? Um, you said you pulled your hamstring. Um, yeah. I currently have some hamstring pain right now. I'm trying to uh, do a lot of stretching and foam rolling, trying to make sure it's set back to 100%. But um, so, yeah, how was that uh, experience of, of pulling your hamstring? Um, so, whenever I pulled my, so I pulled my hamstring. Um, wow, I, I just remembered. There's two injuries I got in high school. One, I fractured my face because somebody headbutted me. Um, I can't remember if it was junior year or senior year, but I was, I think it was my senior year that I, I injured my jaw, my thing. But like, I hurt my hamstring also. But like my hamstring was on and off, but this one not took me out for the whole semester because I couldn't play soccer. If a ball hits my head, like it's the worst pain ever. So I just didn't touch the ball for like with anybody else for like five months. Um, but the hardest thing was once I got injured my junior year, we made it to playoffs for the first time. Like we made it to playoffs. Uh, we won we lost second round. And then I don't, I don't know, I don't remember how I got my hamstring injury, 
but I know I had a hamstring injury. And then I have I still have the video of me getting head butted. Like we both, me and a uh, the, the other team, we went up for a header. I headed the ball, but like I jumped really high, and he came late. And as I'm coming down, as I headed it, I headed the like the top of his head, and I passed out. And um, I didn't even know I passed out. I went to the doctor. He's like, "Did you pass out for a concussion and stuff?" I was like, "No, I didn't pass out." And then I looked on the film. I was just I was laying there like asleep. Uh, but if you pass out, you don't know you passed out. Because I, I stood up mid-game and like everybody was waking me up like, hey. And then I stood up and blood just started gushing out of my nose. Uh, yeah, after that, it was very hard for me to do headers. Like even now, the reason why I'm so behind on working on headers is because I guess that traumatized me for a, a, a long time. And I never wanted to like be aggressively do headers and boxes because I didn't want to like go blind. Because the doctor was like, my bone was just a little bit away from like poking into my eye. So. But wow, yeah, I can imagine just from one injury like that, um, it traumatizes you for like almost up for a few years now. And so, um, how how long were you out for? You were, you said you're out for the complete uh, the rest of the season. Your yeah, senior so, year. So for my 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 senior year, I was I I was out for um, most of the season. Like you know, the beginning tournaments everybody takes all of that. Like I missed all of it. Um, I don't think I even I didn't get on to like maybe the last two games, but it was just like nobody cares at that point. And um, there there was a coach who actually gave me an offer to a junior college. He offered me, most of it paid off and I'd be paying $700 a month out of my end, which isn't too bad. But at the same time, I'm paying around the same amount for being at a university here at UGRGB. So yeah. I think I made it the right decision not going there because at the time I couldn't drive. I was, I couldn't drive, I didn't have a job. And if I went somewhere else, like it would have been extremely tough to depend on others to like yeah, help. Yeah, them. for sure. So um, your senior year now, completely gone uh, the season. So how? What? What did you do when you graduated from high, high school? How did you? Did you go straight to UTRG right after high school, or how did that? Oh no no, 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 no. I graduated 2015, and I didn't go to UTRG till 2019. Okay, so I, okay. I, there was a large gap. All right. So, yeah. So what, what, what was the transition from high school to, to the next step that you took? OK, so right after I left high school, I joined my community college. You know, they had a semi soccer team there, a club team. Um, it was really bad. And because oh, it was Lone Star Community College, they have different campuses of community colleges in Texas. I went to one in the Woodlands. Team wasn't good. I was like, OK, I'm, I can't like skip studying to play with you guys because like they even had girls on there so i was like nothing nothing yeah, against girls not but hard. it's not what i want so i left and then i moved to a different campus apparently it was like the best community college in houston soccer team wise and i joined long stars team and yes we ended up beating um houston houston downtown university had their own um their own team too like a club team so we beat them and then we went to AM to play other teams in a tournament. But that was my first, like, because everybody was grown. It was all college kids. Some that quit soccer, that could have went to big schools, whatever. They didn't want to do that. And they went to like AM, AUT. So there were there were good teams. At the end of the day, AM and UT won in the finals because their schools are bigger than ours. So they had more diverse players to get from. So they won that tournament. And whenever I came back, I was like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's the farthest Lone Star team will ever make it. So I was like, I need to find something better. And I put it on my goal. Like, my goal was to find a good team because I, I don't know what video I looked at, but it was another professional player saying, like, you got to try to find your best team as possible. So I was like, okay, I have to do that. And I was like, what teams in Houston are, like, good? And then one day I was on Twitter and somebody retweeted something from Houston FC. I was like, what is Houston FC? And I did a little research. I was like, oh, it's a PDL team. It's right under um, USL, um, USL1. And I was like, okay, I have to try out. 
but I didn't know what to do. You know, their website didn't really give much information. So I just sent a DM to the Twitter account and the Twitter person who uses it was like, I, I have forwarded your message to the head coach. And later on, she sent me his number and like tryout dates. And the coach said, you know, we already, tryouts already passed. It was like April 4th and I was messaging them in May. Mm-hmm. He's just like, you know what? Just come and I'll see you play. And then I went, I'm not gonna lie, when I went, those kids, like, in my perspective, they were all so good. I was just like, holy crap. So I'm, it was so much pressure on me. But I think the coach liked me, uh, I guess because I was always working hard. Like, he'd yell at me. I, I got yelled at so much, like, to do better. Like, it wasn't like, you suck, love. It was more like, you can, like, stop making the same mistakes over and over. And if you came, if you're new to our team, at the end of training, you knew who I was because my coach would call my name at least five, six, or seven times because I would make so many mistakes, but I keep like pushing. And then I was with him for about two years with Houston FC. And then he started a UPSL team. And then I played, I got a lot of minutes in UPSL. I mean, USL League Two. When it, well, it was still PDL at the time. I didn't get a lot of playing time the first, the first year, the second year also, and then the third year was whenever everything started to pick up for me. I, he also put me on his UPSL team. I played in the spring and then the summer came. He wanted to play USL in the USL League too, but I was trying to save up money for the fall for, to be able to pay for my classes. So I, I was missing a lot of games. Uh, and they had to travel and I was like, I can't risk like missing out four days of work Mm -hmm. so i sacrificed those games but i made sure to show i showed up to like almost every single training i just couldn't make the game but upsl was local so i could go on the sundays and play with the upsl team and then in 2018 fall um i asked my coach like if he thinks i should um if, if there's a way he can help me like find any teams and our assistant coach he was the division one assistant coach for Houston Baptist University. So I thought he could help me get into that division one school, but he didn't look like, you know, he, he said everything was already closed. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I won't, I won't look at that. And then I was like, I'll do it myself then. You know, I just, when it came down to it, if you want something done, do it yourself. So I went yeah. and I made an email. I started finding all the division one schools in Texas. Um, well, I put all the schools. I sent the message to all the schools. But then my dad, I talked to my dad about it, that I sent all those messages. And then he was like, well, what team do you want to play on? Do you want to play Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One?" And I was like, I want to play Division One." He's like, so stop worrying about Division Two and Three teams. Just, just get them out of your mind right now. And that's exactly what I did. And you want to know the funny thing? Out of all the schools I sent my highlights and my email to, the only ones that did, responded were Division One schools. Just one Division Two responded. None of the D3 schools responded. The rest of the D2 schools in Texas did not respond. Only the Division I schools responded. Wow, so like, wow that's very impressive. And imagine if I never believed that I could play D1 and I only sent the messages to D2 and D3 schools. I would only have one offer. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's why it's really important for when uh, players are looking to play college soccer, you have to, you have to email everybody, everybody of every league and just have your op- options open. And then again, always strive for higher, strive for division one and maybe you end up going to division two or, or whatever the situation is for whoever it is. So that's, that's very good, that's very good. And it's interesting how, um, so your, your very first like v- competitive team was when you were, uh, I believe your freshman or sophomore year of college, correct? When you were in mm-hmm. junior colleges. Uh, yeah. So how was that transition from, uh, being, not being on a, um, not being on a, uh, <clears throat> a competitive team to now you're on a very strong division one competitive team. How was that transition from the junior colleges over now you're playing division one with, uh, with uh, UTRG? I think the transition is actually pretty massive. Yeah. Like the, the intensity of the games and the training is the biggest part because at the lower levels half of the team are going to go through the motions and then when you get to 
if you're playing with Division One players, there's a lot, there's more players who are trying to get to the next level, so they grind differently. If it makes any sense, because some like at the lower levels, some people are good, but they don't grind, so they never help push you to get better because they're just going with the motion. He's like, oh, I don't need to do this extra stuff because I already know I can get by him, you know. But here, you want to make sure that person doesn't get by you because if you want to start, that can't happen. So everybody pushes a little more. And if you don't start, scouts can't see you, et cetera, and you just look dumb. So you want to push as much as possible and get as many minutes as you can. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For sure, for sure. So how was the how was the process? How was the process from receiving that first email of UTRG? Did they just offer you right away or how was that? No, 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 no. <laughs> Nope, nope, no. Nope. So I had sent my, like, this is 2018, December. I sent the head coach here an email um, that I, ha I have, I applied for UTRGV and I want to play for your school. And here's my highlights. Okay. No response, right? January comes, you know. Um, Incarnate Ward coach, I sent him a message too. He said, we'll keep in contact. And um, the HBU coach, told me, you know, they just finished their squad. And um, so I was like, okay, you charge your V and Incarnate Ward are the closest ones because I didn't want to go too far. So I emailed him again once I got accepted. I said, hey, I just got accepted to you charge V. Um, just an update for you. And then he responded, he's like, okay, great. I'll see you Monday. And like, he's saying that like Thursday before. And I was just like, Monday, because then, then I look, classes start Monday for UTRGV, and then I was like, okay. Ah, uh, for the, so you went in for the spring semester? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, spring 2019. Uh, he's just like, come, I'm going to let you try out. I'm going to give you like two weeks to try out with the team, and we'll see how you do. And I was like, okay. So I just packed my bag. Monday came, I told my dad in the morning, I was just like, uh, this is school, UTRGV, they said I can go, so I'm going to go. My dad's like, okay. I hope you make it. I was like, okay. And then I got yes. in the car. Uh, I drove six hours. I didn't have a place to stay or anything, so I slipped in my car the first day. And then the next day, I was trying to find if I can get into the dorms. They put me in some dorms, super expensive dorm. I wish somebody was there helping me, because that was not okay. And um, um, I ended up trying out for the team. My I called my PDL coach. I told him where I was at and how I'm trying out. He's like, why didn't you tell me you're going to go try He's like, man, I love it when you guys do it on your own without needing us. He's like, that's what everybody needs to learn. Because like, I had this basically a free trial because I did everything on my own. And yeah, he, like, exactly. he just told me, whatever you do, just trust your first instinct. And I was like, okay, I will. I went, you know. And I just, at first, the, the hardest part was understanding what he was trying to tell you to do. That was the hardest part. And I came in playing as a striker, number nine. So I went through a whole semester playing number nine. Um, as a striker, I never played defense, okay? So- Yeah, because you're a defender, that's right. You're now defender. I'm a defender. The fall came and I was still like placed as a, a striker. And after like, you know, I played several games. I got some minutes playing striker. Cause a lot of the time I have a lot of endurance and the other forward, he doesn't have as much endurance as me. So he'd play for like 20 and the coach would put me in and I just like harass defenders. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would bring us that momentum. And then he said, usually once I bring that momentum, he'll switch me out with my friend um, Sanchez, who just got signed from the Toros. He'll switch us out and we have this momentum. And the, the team knows he's really good at scoring. So when he's, when he's back in, boom, bah. And then we'll get like yeah, three yeah. goals in and then we're just like celebrating. Wow, that's, that's good. Yeah, and then halfway through the semester, um, we we're going to play against Air Force, the Air Force uh, soccer team. And then um, a lot of our team, been the starters been playing like a lot, a lot, a lot. And this is mid-season when people start crashing. And he's like, I need to give them at least a break. We're going to play a new formation, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, he's like, you're going to be number nine the day before. And then the day of the game, before people start coming, he walks up to me. He's like, hey, um, have you ever played center back before? You know? And I was like, um, 
Because I'm gonna put your center back to that. <laughs> I was like, wow. no. He's like, can insane. you do that? Is that gonna be too hard? I'm just like, uh, I could do it. I had that like that hesitation in my head. I was like, you better not decline a chance to start. Like, yeah, uh, I can do it. So I started the game. Um, everybody said I played really good. Everybody was like, why don't you play center back? You're really good at it. I'm like, really? Am I? And after that, I played center back for the rest of the semester. And then I, I started like the last four or five games of the season. So that was. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's very like right last, literally last minute, what, 30 minutes before the game, one hour before yeah. the game. Like we're, I've, I've already changed my uniform right before we head out. And then he came to tell me that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, just like your old coach told you, you know, trust your instincts and you, you went ahead and you accepted that. And that was good. That's really good. But um, just to track back a little bit, I'm interested in how your experience was the, that trial. How was that trial? You know, it was your first day. This is your first time training with a Division One, like very competitive team. How was that experience? Um, so when school starts in the spring semester, we don't officially start training till like after two weeks of school. So the first two weeks without coaches, the team went out to play a lot. And it was like eight v eights or whoever would show up. A lot of times it was just like eight v eight. And then we're playing like, you know, playing like that. And I was getting to learn the players and they're playing fast. And I think by me playing with them for those two weeks every day helped me get on par by the time the coaches saw me. Because everybody knew me, and I was working so hard. Like, I don't even – it's just – it's a different feeling whenever you know everything's on the line. And I knew, like, I already signed up for the classes. I already signed up for the dorms. I had to pay. And I was like, there's no out. There's no out. There's no Yeah, out. That's, that's, that's just very – like, that's commitment 100%. You know, and a big risk, too, because – what if the coach didn't like you? Then I know, I would have been stuck a, here. You're going to have to be stuck there for a whole semester. Yeah. And so, wow, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, this, that's that, the, the commitment. And um, so how was your season then? How was your season this 2019 fall, um, you know, as a team and as well individually? Okay, so as a team, um, when we first started, after like the first four games, um, before actual season started, we played um, UCF. We lost 3-2. And they scored in the very last one minute. And the coach said, like, at the end of the semester, the coach said our team was still the best team he's played. And they finished in the top 10, I believe. So yeah, yeah they're here in Orlando. That's where I'm, I am. Right yeah. Now. So, like, we played them. And then we played Stetson. We beat Stetson. We played Marshall. We beat Marshall. Uh, we beat a lot of teams that were high. So on our RPI, we we're ranked as number two in the nation because we just beat like big teams. Yeah. Wow. We we're ranked number two in the nation. And then the injuries started to come. So we were like this. We we're like at a, at a peak. And then as injuries started to call, crawl in, we just started going downwards. So I don't know. Why? But I feel like the the bench players we have we if we could have put more effort into it, when somebody gets hurt, the replacement shouldn't low, drop the level. You know, I think that's what hurt us the most. When our we like both of all of our strikers got injured like straight up, and as at the point when they got injured, because we went we we didn't win seven games in a row in the last games. Not because we weren't scoring. I mean, not because they were scoring on us, but because we couldn't score. We went like four ties, zero, zero, or one, one, but we didn't have strikers to finish. So that was the only thing that really killed us. They were both injured at the same time. Yeah, yeah. As a team, yeah, it's, it's very important to have the, the starters to be just as good as the, their replacements, you know, to help out the team that way. And what about you individually, as this was your first um, Division One experience? How was that? Um, when preseason came, it was super hard, like training twice a day. Um, cause our coach brought in like 37 players. He said, he's going to cut down the team to 25. So it was really stressful. Like I didn't know if I was going to make the team, but I was, 
you know, I got to keep pushing. And there were some drills we were doing, like I was messing up. And it was all in my head because once preseason ended, coach put the list of the team. I made the, the roster. And every training after that, everything was just like, and it, my friends were like, where was that? Like during preseason, I was just like, I don't know. I guess I was just like scared. And I think it's a thing that soccer's a lot in your mind. And if you're giving yourself these negative energies, you're going to play negatively. So the season, um, it was going pretty good. I think I, I believe I played good amounts of minutes for a first time division one, like first half, like as a striker, uh, the first half of the season, I think I still got pretty good amount of minutes because the senior players as expected would get more minutes and, you know, it was helping me strive and get better. And towards the end of the halfway through the semester, our, my coach placed me as a center back and I started every game. I was one of the only players that would play the whole game plus the extra time, like 115 minutes in the game. And I, the kid, I took his spot, uh, my friend, like, I guess I started, I, I ended up starting overhead and I was asking for tips, all the tips. And I, I, I took all his advice and I applied them. And he's been playing college soccer for four years. He was a senior. And at the end of the semester, I took his spot. And I, I started the last four games, even the very last game, he didn't even get a single minute, which like, I was like, we, we were already down like two, so I was like, if it was me, like I let you play, but like, it wasn't my call. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a tough situation. Um, I, I can imagine. And so, um, uh, was it just gonna? Oh man, I just lost my train of thought for a second. But um, oh yeah. So uh, it's just it's, it's it's really interesting how your improvement, you know, from starting at sixteen just skyrocketed, and you know, uh, it not it didn't all happen just by luck. It didn't happen overnight. What do you think really differentiated yourself? from other people or other players that may have had the opportunity? Why, why do you think you you stood out and, and you made the team there? So I think number one is my talent, which is not giving up. That's my biggest talent. Like, um, if I could say anything, it's just my, my desire to not stop. And plus effective training. So, even in high school, even in college, some kids don't train at all. Like even during this quarantine, I know a lot of several teammates that are not doing anything to get better. And that's what separates me from those guys. While everybody else is comfortable, I would always go out, I'd go train. Me and my roommates are training. If you can't train with me, I'll go train alone. And just working on things that I know I need to work on. I know I'm physically strong, fit, and fast. So you won't see me stuck in the gym lifting weights. Instead, I know I need help with dribbling. So I'll keep doing dribbling. I know I need help with passing. I'll do passing. And since I started soccer late, I didn't watch games a lot. So I tried my best to like watch games and try to understand. Because even so now, that the biggest thing that kills me is my understanding of the game itself. Because you've probably watched over 100 games in your lifetime. I probably watched not enough not enough so yeah okay okay yeah all right well uh yeah that, that's very interesting you have a very interesting journey very different from others and uh sounds very successful so you're a junior now entering your senior year correct yeah mm -hmm. so in the fall well because right now i'm considered a junior i don't know if i'm going to be considered a senior next fall or not but i'll find out after the summer classes Right, right. Okay, okay. And uh, so what are your plans now? What are your plans? Um, or actually, before I get into that, before I get into that, I saw that your team, you guys played against um, the MLS side or the USL uh, championship side, uh, Houston Dynamo. Are they MLS or, or USL? MLS. MLS. How was that experience? Did you get to play oh. that game by any chance? I saw that. Um, Fantastic. I played, I played the whole game. Wow, so, really? How was yeah. that experience? So that was this spring semester. Um, they were the first team we, that, they were the first pro team we got to face. And they were extremely fast. Well, I don't know if it's considered fair, 
because we played both their first team and their second team. We played their first team in the first 45, first 40 minutes, and then we played their second team the first 40 minutes, the second 40 minutes. So they're told, told both teams to just high press. And wow. Yeah, so everything, like, there's nothing about them that's going to be like, oh, my goodness, this guy's stronger than me, this guy's faster than me. On their team, I only saw one fast person that could – Personally, I feel like that could give me a challenge. There was only one person he was the winger on the right. Everybody else, just you'll you'll find a bunch of Division One players at that same pace. But the only difference is whenever the center backs are the defensive line is moving the ball from the right back to the left back, probably like twice the speed of us when we do it. So we were trying to catch them, capture them in our offensive traps. But we couldn't because by the time our players are getting there, the ball's already gone. And their fitness level were so high compared to us. Because if we were, if our fitness level were there, we could have, like, got to those spots one step earlier and could trap them. So we couldn't trap them. And, but it was our first time, our first game also. And we didn't know how fat – we had new team, new teammates. Not everybody knew how it was going to be. So that was, the, and another thing I noticed about the Houston Dynamo is they're attacking third. Everything's like, wow. when somebody yeah. passes this guy a ball, he'll just one touch it over there. This guy will one touch it back. That guy will one touch it over there. They will one touch it over there. I'm like, wow. And that was the one thing. So I just knew, don't dive. Don't dive. And that's, I just kept that. Um, so they ended up beating us 3-0. Um, it may... I think 3-0, 4-0, one of those. But the, like a few days later, they ended up playing the Toros, the USL Toros. They beat them more than they beat us, so it made me feel kind of good, you know. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> Anyways, they beat them 5-0. We played the Toros. The Toros beat us like 5-something. Five, five, five 5-1, huh. five, 5-2. The Toros, the pro team, they beat us 5-2 after Dynamo. And then we went to play Austin Bold. Uh, we played Austin Bold. And I believe, uh, I'm trying to remember. I believe we played Austin Bold and San Antonio FC. I believe so. Yeah, I remember Austin Bold was the last one. And then after Austin Bold, we played... Um, no, no, I don't think we played San Antonio FC. I think we're supposed to play before the coronavirus. I can double check. But we played Austin Bold, and we lost. We lost, I think it was like 2-0. We lost against Austin Bold. And then finally, before the corona stuff happened, we had another match against the Toros, and we ended up beating them 2-1. So a Division One team beat a pro team. So it was... We finally got a gist after playing all those pro teams. Our coach showed us how to like adapt to it, and like for and now I'm not a center back anymore. He put me on a right back because a lot of their wingers were fast, and I was faster. And he knows I'm fast, so I, I've been shutting down those guys. Like for the Austin Bowl, they had a striker. Um, he's a tall black guy. He was fast, and then they switched me, and then he could not do anything. And then my um, yeah. and the cool person I saw at the Austin Bowl game on the bench, he's trying to become a coach for their team, was my Houston FC's son. He's like 23. He was, he's part of Austin Bolt. He's like, how did you get here? Because the That's last time he saw me was like when I first joined the team and like I was, you know, I wasn't as good. And he was like, bro, I'm so proud of watching you play. He's like, and you got 90 minutes against a pro team. Fantastic mm -hmm. job. He's like, bro, you need a good, he's like, Go whenever over there, somewhere, please go help my dad and his team. I was like, okay, I will. But you know, the coronavirus just canceled everything. Yeah. Wow. It's just, it's unfortunate because the way I'm hearing it, it's like you guys finally adjusted. You guys are like clicking together. And then unfortunately, coronavirus hit and it kind of ended everything. So uh, this leads me to my next point. What are your goals? What, what are some things you want to achieve for this coming fall uh, 2020? Um, so, as of right now, we don't even know if there's going to be a season in the fall. Um, Texas, a lot of stuff is like not as serious, but there's other states 
that are really bad. So the NCAA might not even host the competition. If that's if that's the case, then you know I just gotta keep focusing on myself. I want to be in contact at least with a really good agent. Yes, I'm gonna try myself to contact teams, but and if I get that, great. I won't need an agent. But at the same time, I don't want to be ignorant and leave that aspect out of it. So I need to have at least an agent. And I want, if I can start every single game, that's that would be my biggest goal. Start all mm -hmm. 15 appearances. And even if we go to the playoffs, I want to keep going. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But um, yeah, yeah, having an agent, that uh, is uh, really important. I myself, I uh, when I'm uh, tr currently transferring from West Virginia and over to Florida, um, and uh, I'm, I did the I did the whole transfer with the I did I had one option with the connection that I had. I had another option that I worked on on my own, and I had another option with the agent. And the option with the agent worked out best. So having an agent also definitely helps a lot. But um, but yeah, no, it was really interesting. Really interesting to hear your journey. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm sure everybody here uh, learned a lot from it. And as we're coming towards the end of the, the conversation, the podcast, whatever you want to call it, I guess I'll have a, a few last questions for you. Uh, first question, what's your favorite club? Uh, my favorite club? A club I enjoy watching, um, I would say it's PSG. That's my favorite club to watch. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And... Um, if you had the opportunity to swap jerseys, uh, swap jerseys with any player, uh, who would it be? Uh, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, magic man, the magic man. Yeah, he's the one. And that got uh, if you had a chance to ask or to have a conversation with any player and be able to ask them questions, who would it be? Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. What mm -hmm. question would you ask him then? I would ask him, "What did you do?" the most growing up while you were playing soccer, besides playing with others. But um, Jodabani, uh, once again, I really appreciate you coming on to the, the podcast, uh, Going the Distance. Once again, it was really interesting to hear your story as we listen to everyone else's story. Um, to everybody that's watching the video, that's listening, I'm sure you gained some kind of information here. You gained uh, resilience, hard work, and pretty much anything is possible. So um, once again, I'm going to have all of Joe Dabini's information down in the description. Go check out his YouTube, his Instagram. He's got uh, really quality uh, content, uh, content there. And once again, Joe Dabini, thanks for coming over. Yeah, thanks, Adam.